They head toward the latest bombing in Gaza, knowing that in the rubble they will find the victims, some of them alive. Yet after 12 days of this, conditions in Gaza may be about to get worse. Among the latest victims was the driver of a UN vehicle. And now the UN says it's suspending aid deliveries to Gaza's hungry and cowering civilians until the safety of its employees can be guaranteed. The Israelis have the exact coordinates of all of our movements, they know who's going where. There is simply no excuse. The Israelis say they are investigating the incident as they continue to sweep through the fringes of Gaza's populated areas searching for Hamas fighters. For a while today, it looked like anger in the Arab world might drag Israel into a war on two fronts. Several rockets fired from Lebanon landed in northern Israel, damaging an old age home and injuring two residents. But the Salvo is being blamed on a fringe militant group and is being treated as an isolated incident. The Israeli military campaign may have reached the point of making the rubble bounce, but the diplomatic track seems stuck too. The issue is how to keep Hamas from rearming itself after any potential ceasefire. If they simply bring more weaponry in, the Israelis fear they'll be back here again in six months having to do this all over again. As the latest temporary ceasefire ended, the shooting resumed. And so did Hamas's rockets, one of them injuring some Israeli soldiers. In what is becoming a stalemate, Israel's leadership is facing a stark choice. Apparently, the uh, leading uh, politicians in Israel are fast approaching the conclusion that it is best for them, uh, also because of uh, the uh, coming of the Obama administration, to stop the um, operation in Gaza before it is too late. For a lot of people, it's already too late. Mark Phillips, CBS News, on the Israel-Gaza border.